today we're going to be learning how to use our polarimeter. Uh, first thing we need to do is, of course, turn it on. In the back portion, we have a sodium lamp, which is producing wavelengths around 589 nanometers, and this is known as the sodium D doublet line. And that's why on the specific rotation value, you see that capital D. That's referring to the sodium D line uh, that's coming off of there. Uh, over here, we have a couple of optics, some lenses, some polarizers, which will produce uh, light, which has a uh, horizontal polarization on one side and a vertical polarization on the other side. And here we have our solution tube, where we're going to be uh, fill putting our solution. This is two decimeters long, and again, when you're doing your calculations, uh, you're going to be putting the value of two in there for the length of the cell that we're going to be using. And then the front part is where, of course, you uh, look, and uh, we can read our scale like so. So you'll just be going here and then just moving this back and forth to find where the values of light are equal, and we'll be looking at that um, in a little bit. All right, now we're going to demonstrate how to fill the polarimeter tube. So you'll notice there's two ends to the polarimeter tube. Uh, this end over here is a little bit bigger. This is the end that we're going to be filling in. Now to describe how to fill the polarimeter. So there is the little lens which goes in here, and uh, just make sure that you know this thing does fall out, so make sure that this is held in there properly. And also, there should be a little O-ring, and that goes on the cap portion over here. You don't want the O-ring to be between this and the glass, otherwise you're going to trap an air pocket, which will be bad. So just make sure that your lens is in there and that it doesn't fall out. Now, as for filling this up, you're going to take your solution, uh, which is your sugar solution over here in your volumetric flask. And make sure, of course, that all the sugar is dissolved in here, otherwise you're going to have bad problems because your concentration is not going to be what you calculated. So all we're going to do here, <coughs> simply just pour your solution into the polarimeter tube. And we want to fill this all the way to the very tippy top. And when I say all the way to the top, I mean all the way to the top. So as you can see here, you actually have a little bit of solution going above the tube. So that's when I say you need to fill this all the way to the top because we don't want any air bubbles actually trapped in there. So then you take your cap with, of course, the lens in there. You very carefully just put this on top and you turn it slowly. This way, if there is any air in there, it's going to be expelled out. You just keep turning this until it's just finger tight. Don't go crazy with it. Once you have that in there, you just turn it back and forth a couple of times, and you just want to see if you have any air bubbles. Now, a small one like this is perfectly fine. Um, that's actually why when we're going to be orienting this, we're going to have the big side up here. Now, if you have a small little air bubble in there, that's perfectly fine, um, as long as it's not too big. If it's too big, uh, then you simply have to unscrew this again and try refilling it until you get rid of that air bubble. Right. Now, if you're really good, uh, you'll notice right here, I fill this up again, and you'll notice that there are no air bubbles actually in the system. So that's ideal, um, and it just takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of patience to uh, actually get it that way. But as you can see, there's no, no air bubbles in there. And as long as we go there and dry it off, put it in, be perfectly fine. Now after this has been filled, uh, you're going to put it here in the polarimeter. And you definitely want to make sure that you've dried it off. Um, we're dealing with sugar solutions, and if there's any solutions on the outside, this could make things very, very sticky. So instead, what we want to do is make sure that it's obviously nice and dry, and you know, there's no liquid on the outside. And you just put it into here. And then there's two knurled ends on the end. You do this to cover it up. And then at that point, we can now look inside the polarimeter and see what is actually so right now we're looking through the viewfinder of the polarimeter. Uh, ignore all the little imperfections, that's just the, the glass quality. And also the rectangular nature, that's more of this, the camera uh, zooming in on the little peephole. When, when you really look at it, it'll be round. But as you can see, if you're off too far to one side, it's basically equal brightness, very bright. That's not what we're looking for. And so what we want to do is we go towards, and you'll notice on the left, it's getting dimmer and dimmer and eventually it becomes black and then as we pass the, the transition point you notice that 
it now becomes bright on the other side and the other side becomes black. All right, so basically what we're looking for is this little transition region right here where we're bright on the right and bright on the left and you want to go right in between till they're essentially the same brightness and that's what we're actually looking for so they're both equally dim if you go over here that's the wrong way if you go like over here that's the wrong way we're looking for this transition region between the two and you just want to get right in between where they're both equally dim and that's what we're actually looking for once you have the polarizer correctly set you can read the angle this is done using a vernier scale on the top is the integer value of the angle, which you can find by matching up the line with the zero on the bottom. Negative angles are to the left of zero, which is where we are now, and positive angles are to the right of zero. To record the angle to tenths of a degree, we use the lines on the bottom. This is the Vernier scale method. We have equally spaced gradations on the top and bottom, but the scales have slightly different spacings. If we have negative angles, we use the lines to the left of zero, and similarly for positive values, we use the lines to the right of zero. This is very easy to remember. If we are to the left of zero on the top, we use the left on the bottom. And if we are to the right on the top, we use the right on the bottom. With the Vernier scale, there's no interpolating to the hundredths place. All you will record is to the tenths place. Now to make a reading, you look to see where the line on the bottom best matches with the line on the top. It's very subtle, but if you look at the neighboring lines, one is slightly before and the other is slightly after. This can help find the line which best aligns. As you can see, I've been moving it back and forth and the reading is displayed. Feel free to pause the video and see if you can read the same values. It's not that hard once you get the hang of it. Okay, and when you're done taking your readings, carefully remove the top. Be careful of the lens which is on there. And then just simply pour out the solution into the appropriate waste container.